Welcome to Review Recapped. Today we will be showing you one of the most exciting gritty movie, named Bright. Spoilers ahead. Sit back and enjoy. This film opens up showing the city of Los Angeles, where humans coexist with orcs, elves, and fairies. Officer Daryl Ward is out on the streets with his partner, Jacoby who is the world's first orc cop. Jacoby is grabbing a burrito when an orc gangster emerges from a shop and shots Ward with a shotgun. Sometime later, Ward is ready to go back to the force. He is struggling to keep his house that he shares with his wife Sherry and daughter Sophia. Sophia hates that her dad is a cop because she worries he'll get killed. They see a video from Joe Rogan interviewing an orc as they discuss Jacoby being on the force. The other orcs hate Jacoby as they consider him a traitor. Ward dislikes having him as a partner because he blames Jacoby for him getting shot. Sherry then makes him go outside to deal with a fairy that's attacking the bird feeder. Ward takes a broom and whacks the fairy to death. Ward and Jacoby ride together as a team. With Ward openly blaming Jacoby for the shooting incident. After driving through the wealthy elf town neighborhood, they arrive at work, where a few rotten cops, Pollard, Hicks, and Brown, mock Jacoby when he's not around. When Ward is assigned to be on patrol with Jacoby for the day, he protests to Sergeant Ching, but she doesn't care for his complaints. Ward and Jacoby head downtown to handle a disturbance, meeting with Sheriff Rodriguez. A crazy man named Serling is waving a sword around and yelling nonsense. With the officers drawing their weapons, Serling surrenders and is taken into custody. On the ride back to the precinct, Serling pukes in the back of the car before starting to speak orcish to Jacoby, saying he has a message from an organization called the Shield of Light, telling him to remember the old ways, and how a prophecy has chosen him, and that Ward is blessed. Ward is later approached by Captain Perez, along with two men, Yamahara and Arkashan, who order Ward to record Jacoby admitting that he let Ward Shooter get away. Serling is interrogated by an elf FBI agent, Candemir, and his partner Montehu. The agents ask Serling what he knows about two elf sisters, Layla and Tika. Serling knows that Layla is a dark elf, part of the Inferni clan that wants to resurrect the Dark Lord, an evil entity that was defeated 2000 years earlier by the Nine Armies. Layla and her minions want to bring him back to unleash darkness upon the world with the use of three magic wands. Layla is a bright, meaning she can hold a wand without it destroying her. Montehu says they need to find Tika in order to set a trap for Layla, on the night patrol, Ward tries to get Jacoby to confess to the incident, when they are alerted to something going on at a house on Abrams Street. They arrive and are shot at by an unseen assailant. After a shootout, the officers kill the assailant. They head inside the house and find dead bodies, including a few that look like they were burned alive. The officers find Tika, who is in possession of the wand. Ward calls in Cheng and the other cops in regards to the wand. They want the wand for themselves, and they order Ward to go along with it and kill Jacoby or he dies as well. Ward goes outside to do the job, but first he presses Jacoby at gunpoint on what really happened when he got shot. Jacoby admits he did let the shooter get away, but it was because he lost him in a crowd. He thought he cornered the guy in an alley, but it was just a young orc spray painting the side of a building. Knowing that the human officers would kill the kid on the spot, Jacoby let him get away on a fire escape. Moments later, Cheng and the officers step outside. Ward spins around quickly and shoots them all dead, but Pollard is the only one hanging on for his life. Jacoby attempts to arrest Ward until they are approached by a gang led by a disabled mob named Poison, who knows about the wand and wants it for himself so that he can walk again. Ward and Jacoby take Tika and head into their van as the gangsters start attacking. The officers drive away as the gangsters pursue them. The gangsters shoot at them, but Ward and Jacoby are able to shake most of them off. They find a place to hide briefly until more gangsters come after them. One of them finds the wand and tries to grab it, but it causes him to explode and kill those around him. Layla and her minions arrive at the e. Abrams house and find Pollard dying before Layla finishes the job. She then finds another Inferni elf, Larica, who is stuck to the walls. She tells Layla that Tika got away with the wand, and she slashes Larica's throat. The elves then come across a family that they kill for more information on the wand's whereabouts. Candemir and Montague later come upon the crime scene at the e. Abrams house, and Candemir knows Layla has lost the wand, making her vulnerable. Ward, Jacoby, and Tika walk through a sleazy orc slash human strip club. Poison and his gang find them and once again threaten them for the wand, but Layla and her minions show up and slaughter Poison and his gang. Another shootout happens, forcing the trio to run again. They run into a nearby convenience store where they find a place to hide. While tending to their wounds in a bathroom, Ward and Jacoby discuss their relationship. 
although Ward doesn't think of them as friends, he does tell Jacoby that he shouldn't want to be like him, despite Jacoby previously stating he wishes he were because he sees Ward as fearless. Rodriguez shows up to the store after hearing about Ward killing the officers. He orders Ward to cuff Jacoby since everyone suspects him anyway, and Jacoby willingly relents. Rodriguez is then shot dead as the elves drive up and crash through the store, shooting at the cops. The trio fight back, shooting at the elves before getting away. Later we see that the trio are then found by a group of Ward gangsters belonging to the Fogteeth clan. After Ward mocks them, they get beaten and dragged to a church that serves as their lair. The orcs bring them to their leader, Dorgu. He wants the wand as well, and he mocks Jacoby for being unblooded. After the cops refuse to give up the wand, Dorgu orders them to be executed. The guards drag Ward and Jacoby to a pit, and Dorgu orders his son Mikey to shoot Jacoby. However, Mikey can't bring himself to do so, because he is the young orc that Jacoby let get away. Dorgu allows Mikey to go home, and Dorgu shoots Jacoby, letting his body fall into the pit. Tika then pulls out the wand and uses its magic power to resurrect Jacoby and raise his body up. The other orcs are astonished and kneel before Jacoby, believing him to be the one the prophecy spoke of. The three then leave. Tika then speaks English for the first time, now that she knows she can trust Ward and Jacoby, she explains that she took the wand because she knew Layla wanted to bring back the Dark Lord, and she had sent Larica to kill her, but Tika took the wand herself. The use of the wand took a toll on her, and it's starting to kill her. She tells them that the Shield of Light can help them if they take her to a pool back at the Abrams house. Ward and Jacoby bring Layla back to the house. Layla and the other Dark Elves show up and battle the cops. Ward and Jacoby manage to kill the elves, and Jacoby appears to shoot Layla dead. They then take Tika to the pool beneath a tree, but Layla emerges, still alive. When she tries to get the wand, Ward grabs it himself. It starts to glow, and he doesn't explode, meaning he is a bright. Tika tells him a war word to cast a spell, which Ward repeats, causing the wand to blast Layla to smithereens. Outside, authorities arrive just as they witness the explosion. Ward and Jacoby look for Tika, but she's gone. The officers are in the hospital and are approached by Kandamir and Montiu. Although Jacoby tries to explain everything that happened. Ward denies that there was ever a wand, and that gangsters killed the corrupt officers. In the end we see. Ward and Jacoby are commemorated for their heroism. Pollard, Brown, Hicks, and Shane are also honored alongside Rodriguez. With Ward expressing his hatred for that fact. Jacoby tells him to let it go, since at least they know the truth. Sherry and Sophia are there to support Ward. While he and Jacoby notice Tika walking among the crowd. Smiling at them. Hope you enjoyed the movie. Please subscribe and turn on notification to help us grow.